Now it's one thing for a Gigapixel update to have incremental changes in the model and be like, okay this is slightly better than the previous in some regards, maybe a few drawbacks here and there, but to completely wipe the floor and do the impossible so much so that I need to make this video is another level. I'm talking about the new Gigapixel 8 generative model called Recover, which targets for sub 1000p images. But I'm here not only to show what previously impossible feats it can do, but why it even benefits high resolution images that might be okay on the surface for the standard model to deal with. But issues like heavy compression and blurry details is benefit too. By the way, I'll link a 20 megabyte per second video.mp4 in the description if you don't want to deal with YouTube's compression alongside an album of all the images processed. One more thing I want to say is that in this guide I'm using 8.01. I tested 8.03 and got some re weird results, I'll share later on why. But yeah, sticking with 8.01 for these examples. For starters, let's test an image that's under 1000p with a 4300 by 600 image as the model is intended for. So here's an artwork from Aizen Suzuki that's a great test for seeing how it retains line work combined with details that's hidden in the darker parts of the artwork. That's a signature detailing of the likes of city pop artists. So all we do is just drop the image and select the recover generative model. For the detail slider I just keep it at 100. This pretty much acts as a post processing sharpness thing and I've never had something look overly sharpened. Else going under would be slightly blurry so yeah. And I mean, just looking at the first impressions compared to how blurry all the details in the original are, it's literally black magic. The line work and colors retained are damn near the same. And of course the creme la creme being the splotches of green floor in the shadows that every other model struggled with. I mean, you can see the line work in the 6.3.3 standard model is pretty okay with the line work. But man, those shadow details are gone for the most part. And even more so with one of the more advanced ways I found to upscale very low resolution artworks was to use a stable division model meant for the artwork say like Mix Pro V3 using a low denoising strength. And even then, just no competition. Here's another more detailed example from a 1270 by 631 image and with 4x upscaling. And compared to the Gigapixel 6.3.3 standard model, sure it denotes better, which I'll get later on about combining the best of both, but look at the spaceships and hard surface objects like beams and structures, just absolutely wipes the floor from both Gigapixel and using a stable diffusion model like Juggernaut to reimagine re the details, especially with how crooked the beams are. Here's an extreme case with a 377x256 photo, I mean and size, with cars involved, so that just doubles trouble. And honestly considering what absolute limited information you have from this garbled and compressed image to begin with, to turn into something that's usable, I mean do we even need to see how much the other mods will struggle and not even like compare with recovers? For images over 1000p. The first example I want to demonstrate is this image I got from Instagram. That's 14400 by 1799, which sounds like, hey, I can just use the standard model to upscale this. But if you know Instagram is that they compress their images to sh like really bad. I mean, what the fuck is this piece of sh So let's drop that into the recover model and see what we get. And I mean, this is legit black magic. Compared to the standard model where some of the windows and building facades are garbled nonsense, the recover model has each individual window realized. Now sure, they aren't exactly perf pixel perfect and same look as the original facades, but I mean, when you don't pixel peep, it looks virtually indistinguishable from the source image. Now back into Gigapixel, in case you're eyeing the redefined generative model and wondering why I haven't covered this, well, let's just say it's another AI reimagining model that, well, is honestly not that great for this use case. This is basically in line with other upscalers that you've seen across the internet like, say, Korea, that utilizes even something as great as Flux and other stable diffusion XL models that's not great in preserving the original details and colors, especially blurry and compressed images. It would just upscale the details into whatever it wants to. To do compared to the recover model that's just excellent at retaining the details and shapes. Plus I've shown even with tailored edited stable diffusion models I've done, it's just not comparative. And lastly I want to get 
back to why I'm not using 8.0.3, which is like one of the newer versions. And well, let's just say when I was testing out two images, the result was immediately blurrier for some reason. I don't know why. There's literally no upside to this model compared to 8.0.1. So there's that and why I've been using the so-called older version. Back to upscaling. Now, for the longest time, simple illustrations have benefited from models like Waifu 2X, Real Easter Again, and the such have been around for almost a decade at this point. But I vouch that even the Recover model can surpass it at times. Now, if it's super simple illustrations, like there's literally just three colors involved for like a logo, then sure, you can stick with the upscalers mentioned that will do still a great job. But here's an illustration example that's more than that with these inch intricate faded detail that you can already see wave 2 just loses these those details upon denoising the image. That and how fine the simple line work is without any JPEG artifacts and the likes, Topaz Gigapixel's standard model will work the details a bit. Not by much, sure, but I mean just looking at the recover result, you can see it's the best of both worlds. Excellent line work and the faded details are retained with the shapes looking mighty fine, whilst the standard model from 6.3.3 worked it. Now you can take it a step further and super sample by dropping the recover result to Wave 2 x so it cleans up the line work a bit but still retains the details. Mighty fine I'd say. Now if your original image has print noise, the recover model isn't the most proficient in denoising. Instinctively I was like, alright I'll just upscale with 6.3.3 which is great at denoising and maintaining line work using a value like 50. But nah, it's Bork in this case. This also shows how much of a step above the recover model is, even for relatively high resolution images, when I thought it couldn't get any better than the standard model from 6.3.3. Note the leaves, details, and the shadows. Line work is borked, color is skewed. So next, how about denoising the original image slightly with Photo AI's denoising models, and then upscale that? Well, same thing, just borked and quarked and not as good as the result below. Now you're wondering, what's the result below called 1750 by 1550%? Well, all I did was just downscale the original image to 1750p and then 1500p respectively, then upscaled with the recover model to the same resolution as the 5k result. Also did a tidbit of a 50-50 mix of both results. But honestly, you can see you can use the result from the 15750p downscale standalone if you don't want to process twice. And as you can see, when comparing to just upscaling the original image, the print noise is mostly gone, whilst the details and line work is still amazing. Now you can't just leave it as such, but of course with my perfectionist thing, all I did was went ahead and did the technique of grabbing the noise bits from the downscaled version while using the original. 2048p upscale as the base image. You can see me using color range to grab bits like the denoise blue sky and ground bits, then on top of that just masking with the brush. And lastly just add noise back so we got some clean noise pattern back. I'm using a color range to lessen the noise from solid colors like the blue sky and grass that's just too intense. Now this works best for images that's above 1000p to begin with. If it's under 1000p, then downscaling it further might not be as good as the above methods, like either upscaling with 6.3.3 standard model with a high suppressed noise value to mitigate the print noise or denoising it before then upscaling. Like for this example, downscaling then upscaling by 70% its original size didn't work out, but using 6.3.3 standard model with a suppressed noise and fixed compression at value at 50 had the clouds looking cleaner, so I just masked the res recover result for those bits. Or a third method would be to upscale then brute denoise with Photos AI's denoise models afterwards. It's a matter of reverting to one of these if either the downscaling then upscaling method doesn't work out, which has happened a couple of times. You'll have to try each method, but sometimes it's based on preemptively knowing what method to use given the resolution and print noise intensity. That comes from practice. For some reason, when I go to check how it's performing in Task Manager, it's underutilizing both 
the GPU and CPU for some reason, even though I set the AI processor as my GPU only. Throughout the processing, the GPU sticks around 56% utilization, then to 65% in the last 8 minutes processing time. So to whoever can explain what's happening with this underutilization would be swell. But with that, using my RTX 4070 desktop GPU, these are some of the test runs of just upscaling the same 16x9 image by 2x at different resolutions from 360p to 1440p to gauge what to expect. Performance wise, it feels like going back 10 years with how long it used to take to upscale compared to now with the standard models taking like 2 to 4 seconds. There's also this bug where if you want to try upscaling the same image to 3x after you just process the image, it just resizes to that resolution instead of actually processing it from scratch for that resolution. So to fix this, I just saved the same image again under a new name so Topaz Gigapixel just doesn't fetch the cache and then say, hey, I just processed the image. And now it actually processes the image from scratch. But honestly, that should be about it. This is truly another worthy update to Gigapixel's incredible upscaling models that's bound to get performance gains in due time. I don't know still what happened with 8.0.3. Maybe just a fluke update, but hopefully we get an actual successor to 8.0.1. That's just somehow knows what to denoise and what to retain, especially when it comes to details in the shadows. And this will always be the hardest pursuit in upscaling models. So enjoy experimenting and hope this helped with utilizing this model more effectively and I'll feed her some.